كل عام وانتم بخير الله يبارك فيك انا اخوك صافي قصقص من لبنان اساسا اهلا وسهلا مع الدكتور تشرفنا بحضرتك وانا وانا نظير محمد عياد اهلا وسهلا اذا تريد ان اقول لك 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 ان اقول What do you sure. think? Okay. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So he will tell you in the Arabic the specific things about the issues. And I will tell you. Thank you, sir. First, my dear guest, the honor of having you today is a great honor for us. Thank you, sir. God bless you. And read as a group of scholars of the Quran. وعلماء الطبيعة اجتمعت لغرض واحد هو فهم معاصر للقرآن الكريم ونشر هذا الفهم بين المسلمين نحن نؤمن أن فهمنا التراثي تأسيسي لفهم الحالي لكن لكل عصر متطلباته ومشاكله لذلك يجب أن يجتهد علماءنا في فهم معاني القرآن بطريقة معاصرة بما يتاح لنا من وسائل المعرفة الحديثة ونشر هذه المعرفة فحاولنا أن نجمع علماء من شتى أنحاء العالم الإسلامي والحمد لله توفقنا إلى ذلك وفقنا الله سبحانه وتعالى إلى ذلك ونأمل أن يكون مؤتمرنا القادم بعنوان هل يمكن للمسلمين إقامة حضارة جديدة وكيف؟ وأن يساهم أغلب علماء المسلمين ليس علماء القرآن فقط علماء المسلمين في شتى المجالات العلوم الاجتماعية العلوم الطبيعية العلوم القرآنية جميع العلوم يساهم كل منهم في مجاله بورقة ثم نجمع هذه الورقات جميعها في كتاب ويكون عندنا دليل نقدمه لزعماء العالم الإسلامي إذا كنت تريد بناء حضارة فهذا هو الدليل من جميع العلوم في جميع العلوم من جميع العلماء فهذه هي الخطة للسنة القادمة إن شاء الله باختصار ونرغب أن تباركوا هذه الخطة حتى نستمر في السير فيها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المغفر رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد فسلام من الله عليكم ورحمته وبركاته وأشكر لكم هذه الدعوة الكريمة والتي جاءت في رحاب القرآن الكريم ومن أجل القرآن الكريم ومن أجل النهوض بالأمة من خلال قراءة متأنية لنصوص القرآن الكريم وفهم هذه النصوص فهما جيدا يتناسب مع مقتضى الوقت وآليات العصر وبما لا يلزم عنه الهدم لركن من الأركان أو التعارض مع ثابت من الثوابت وأقول لا يخفى على حضراتكم بأن القرآن الكريم هو كلمة الله تعالى الخالدة وإذا كانت السنة الإلهية اقتضت أن يقدر الله تبارك وتعالى لكل نبي ولرسول ولكل رسول آية تشهد على نبوته ومعجزة تدل على صدق رسالته فإن اللافتة للأنظار أن هذه المعجزات كانت وقتية زمانية ترتبط بوجود النبي وتنتهي بانتهاء دعوته وتكون مقطوعة الصلة بالوحي إلا أن الأمر جاء على خلاف ذلك تماما فيما يتعلق بهذه المعجزة الخالدة وأعني بها القرآن الكريم فهو كتاب خالد ومعجزة باقية لا ترتبط بزمان ولا تنحصر في زمان ثم إنها مرتبطة بكل الارتباط 
بالدعوة والداعي والمدعوين وصاحب الدعوة وهذا ما يرسخ أهمية هذا الطرح الذي تفضلتم بطرحه فيما يتعلق من ضرورة قراءة متأنية لغرض واضح وهو فهم معاصر لنصوص القرآن الكريم لكني أجد نفسي أمام مجموعة من الأسئلة الملحة العل من أبرزها هل في القرآن الكريم ما يساعد على تحقيق هذا الغرض؟ أقول نعم بأن القرآن الكريم هو كلمة الله تعالى الخالدة الباقية والذي تنتهي الظهور ولا تنقضي المعجزات التي جمعت فيه ولعلنا كل عصر من العصور نقف على جانب من جوانب الإعجاز ما بين الإعجاز البياني ثم التشريعي ثم اللغوي ثم التعبدي ثم العلمي وأقول بأن جوانب أخرى ستظهر وهذا ما يؤكد على أن الانطلاق لاستعادة البناء الحضاري والريادة الحضارية لهذه الأمة ينبغي أن تنطلق من هذا الكتاب الذي أنزله الله تبارك وتعالى نورا ودستورا فهي خطوة مباركة خصوصا وأنكم تفضلتم بالإشارة إلى أن هذا اللقاء قد يكون توقئة لموضوع أرى أن الحديث عنه ليس من باب الرفاهية أو من باب نافلة القوم وهو هل يمكن للمسلمين العمل على إقامة حضارة جديدة وإذا كان يتأتى لهم ذلك فكيف يتحقق ذلك الواقع أن الناظر في نصوص القرآن يجد أن أصول الحضارة أو المبادئ التي تقام عليها الحضارة موجودة سواء فيما يتعلق بالإنسان وبنيانه أو ما يتعلق بالإنسان والمقصد من خلقه أو ما يتعلق بالإنسان والمهمة المنوطة به أو ما يتعلق بالإنسان والصلة التي تربط بينه وبين ربه وبينه وبين جنسه وبينه وبين عناصر الكون المختلفة أعتقد أننا لا نجد كتابا سماويا أو كتابا بشريا فصل القول في هذا على أسس واقعية راعت التوازن بين العقل والنقل بين المعقول والمنقول بين المسطور والمنظور بين الملموس وبين المعنوي وهذا كله يجعلني أنتهي إلى أن إقامة حضارة للمسلمين تتحقق من خلال القراءة المتأنية لنصوص القرآن وفهمها بما يتجاوب ومعطيات العصر خصوصا وأن هذا القرآن جاء كتابا لشريعة جمعت بين الصلاحية للزمان والمكان وجمعت بين الثبات والمرونة وجمعت بين الواقعية والمثالية وأعتقد أننا عندما نتحدث عن حضارة إنسانية فلا بد أن نستحضر هذه العناصر التي انطلق منها الأوائل في تشييد حضارة وتشييد عمران وأبناء إنسان هذا ما أردت أن ألفت النظر إليه في هذا اللقاء الذي أرجو من الله تبارك وتعالى أن يكون محققا لغاياته وأهدافه إنه ولي ذلك والقاط عليه أشكر لكم حسن الاستماع وأترك المجال لأخي الدكتور إبراهيم نجف الأمين العام للأمانة العامة لدور وهيئات الإفتاء في العالم ليقوم بعرض مترجم لهذا الكلام الذي ذكرت شكرا جزيلا ولا فض فوق إن شاء الله وشكرا جزيلا على الكلمة الوافية الكافية شكرا <تصفيق> If you allow me, I will uh, translate the gist of what His Eminence has uh, said, uh, well said, and uh, he articulated the purpose for which this meeting uh, was called for by Dr. Safi. Dr. Safi, first of all, he greeted His Eminence and he thanked him for joining such an important meeting, and then Dr. Safi told his eminence the purpose
for which the uh, called upon a, a number of scholars to get together with the banquet of the Quran to uh, extrapolate the uh, various diamonds of the Quran to build a, a civilization that is based on uh, revelation and he expressed his gratitude for his eminence to bless uh, this gathering. And then his eminence uh, reacted by saying, uh, uh, in the name of Allah, most beneficent, most merciful. And he thanked Dr. Safi and the group uh, of scholars who met uh, today to uh, explain the relevance of the Quran to today's world. And he said that in previous communities and communities of prophets, the miracles were temporal in the sense that it did not go beyond time and place, except the Quran, which is considered as an eternal miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that goes beyond time and place. So it is eternal and its diamonds and gems are there buried for any attempt, any genuine attempt to extrapolate these gems. And he thanked Dr. Sarkin for uh, this group of scholars who are meeting around the banquet of Allah, who are meeting around the Quran, and he told them that your uh, project is genuine, and he said that there is an urgent need to understand the Quran. It is eternal wisdom, but in the light of uh, today's circumstances. And he said that I have a number of questions I would like to pose to the audience, and also I would like to propose a response to uh, these questions. The first question is that, is there in the Quran something that will help accomplish the purpose for which this meeting uh, is proposed? And he said, yes, definitely there are uh, in the Quran a number of guidelines and principles to build a civilization that is based purely on revelation, but with the understanding of the different circumstances and the lived realities that we are uh, living on. And he said that the miracles of the Quran will never end up. Uh, previously and historically, there were uh, miracles related to its eloquence, to linguistic eloquence, to uh, historical uh, incidents, to also legislative uh, miracles, and there will be new emerging miracles for anyone who attempts to extrapolate from this spring of wisdom, which is there for us to uh, grasp. And he said that any good civilization that seeks to build its uh, infrastructure has to be based on uh, the Quranic uh, wisdom. And there are so many ample examples of verses. And he commended uh, Dr. Saar's call for uh, the upcoming conference next year that it will be uh, a call for all scholars from different backgrounds, from social sciences background, from humanities, uh, from uh, also uh, traditional sciences to contribute towards building a civilization based on revelation. And he also ex explained his eminence that the foundations of this proper civilization are found in the Quran in many instances, whether it is it relates to the human being, whether it is relate, whether it relates to its the objectives of the human being or the task of the human being or the morality upon which.
the edifice of civilization is built, we have ample references in the Quran, and there is a balance in this uh, spread of wisdom between the textual and the rational, between the human needs and the societal needs, between the relationship of the human to his uh, lord, to his fellow humans, to also to the entire universe. So the, the, these principles uh, should be sound principles about, on which the uh, conference uh, next year should be built. And he concluded, his eminence concluded with a prayer that uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to extrapolate the gems of the Quran, give us the ability to benefit from the Quran, and give us the ability to serve the call of the Quran. And he promised his eminence, promised that he will be of any help that you kindly give him. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank Excellency, much. I. If you allow me, I would like to congratulate on the behalf of all the participants of the meeting uh, to His Excellency Professor Dr. Nazar Muhammad Ahmed Al Nazar uh, uh, for uh, uh, his new assignment as the Grand Mufti of Egypt. Recently, we had been in Kazakhstan and uh, the news was. Uh, welcomed there in the Secretariat of World and Traditional Religion and the participants of the working group and the Secretariat, they all congratulated His Excellency Dr. Nazar Muhammad Ayad, the Grand Mufti of Egypt. And uh, we are planning here in Pakistan that uh, we will welcome uh, Grand Mufti of Egypt to Pakistan. Uh, 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 Republic of uh, Egypt has already translated the national narrative of Pakistan, Pagame Pakistan, Risarat Pakistan into Arabic. So we hope soon we will welcome uh, Dr. Nazir Muhammad Ayad Al-Ustaz Al-Fadl Wal Mufti Darul Aftal Misya Fi Pakistan Li Istakbalihi Hatta Yekunu Ma'ana Fi Pakistan Wa Inshallah Sa Yushariku Fi Al-Mustakbil Fi Motamarat Allati Sofa Tunazimuha Al Ikra. Shukran Lakum wa Barakallahu Fikun. Shukran Lakum. Thank you so much. His Eminence would like uh, you, uh, Your Excellencies, to proceed uh, with the minutes of the meeting and the agenda of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Um, once again, uh, my name is Ahmed Munir. So I am the secretary of this meeting. Um, this heavy responsibility is, is on my shoulder. So let me share with you the minutes from our previous meeting, and then we can proceed from there. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Shukran. Yes. <clears throat> So let me now go to the page of, so this is the uh, agenda for today's meeting. Said that the first thing we will confirm the me uh, minutes of the previous meeting that was held in May 13, 2024. And then we will also show that what were the actions mentioned in the meeting and what actions have been now completed. Then uh, there is a report uh, of the visit of Dr. Safi Kaskas when he visited Pakistan. So that report would also be showed. Um, and then there is also a report uh, about an online conference. Then the next item, which is the fifth item on the agenda, that is the proposal uh, for the establishment of an annual international Quran scholarship competition and award. Inshallah, Dr. Zia and Dr. Safi will explain about that further. And we will also plan as the next item of the agenda, the future activities. And then we will also ask you that if anyone has any other item to be added to the agenda. So, Actually, if you have any other item to add to the agenda, please let us know and we can add it right now, which we will discuss at the end. So, Dr. Uh, okay. my suggestion is that since there is no observation received uh, on the minutes, 
So my suggestion is that we should confirm the minutes and we should move. Yeah, to I'll, the yeah I'm just moving to the minutes now. I was just uh, getting any any agenda item if need to be added, then I will move to the minutes. Since seeing nobody is uh, suggesting anything new, so let's move on. Agenda is approved as uh, presented. So let's go to the minutes now. So these were the minutes. I think everybody received these minutes. Um, they were sent by Dr. Ziaul Haq to everyone. And these are the people who participated from over the world, from USA, from Pakistan, Malaysia, Jordan. Egypt, Kazakhstan, and Canada. And since I also incorporated the uh, feedback from everyone, so since there is no objection or no amendment to the minutes, so I think we move to approve the minutes. I, yes. second, what is that motion. I second that motion. Okay, great. So all in favor to approve the minutes? Yes. Yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. So minutes are approved. So let's move to the next item on the agenda, which is the actions taken. So the, the very basic actions that were proposed in the first meeting, that was the approval of the Board of Governors that was approved last time. And then the administrative committee was comprised, which is also in action now. And they are, uh, that's why the second meeting is called. Dr. Mohammad Ziaulak uh, was appointed as the chairman of the Board of Governors, while Dr. Safi Kaskas is the patron in chief of this board. Uh, I was appointed as the secretary of this board. And uh, Mr. Zan Malik, from uh, he is the coordinator of the board. So everyone is in their roles. Um, now the next item is the report of the visit of Dr. Safi Kaskas when he visited Pakistan. So I will request um, uh, Mr. Zan that if you would like to give a little brief of it, I will keep the report open. But if you want to talk about it, please go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, sure. I think Dr. Professor Dr. Mohammad Ziaul had uh, can brief us on this report. Uh, I can't the... hear you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Zain is saying, Mr. Zain is saying that uh, if Dr. Ziaul Sahab could brief the audience about the report, that would be better. Dr. Sahab, are you there to please brief? Man, the uh, please let me. Uh, brief, you want to share your uh, screen? No, I, please keep okay. sharing your own screen. I will just sure. go through the uh, document and brief about the visit. It was a wonderful and successful visit of uh, Dr. Safi Kaskas to Pakistan. Uh, he visited uh, Islamabad, Lahore, and Faisalabad. Uh, 